Shoot it! Hey, welcome to Beyond the Barrel. This is your host, Kyle Mason, with the ever-present and voluptuous John Doc Rowley. How you doing, ladies and gents? Dude, that was terrible. That wasn't terrible. That was fantastic. No, that was fantastic. I wish I thought about that. Yeah. Voluptuous, mm. that's fucking great. I'm going to change my Instagram handle. Yeah. You should. You should. How are you doing today, John? Oh, man, we're good. We're good. We're a uh, couple days out from uh baby booties being on the ground baby booties yeah this is our second episode of the day we're trying to get uh get ahead of schedule so you we don't miss a week with you guys so we can keep on uh keep on track once these keep uh, on hustling because you're gonna be hustling a lot yeah we're sleeping little i told the wife i'm gonna bring uh i'm, I'm gonna um stream the delivery live on uh on my youtube channel <laughs> you should you should but you gotta have you gotta have some popcorn Oh, uh, I'm going to be ordering pizza. I mean, just because she can't eat doesn't mean I have to be miserable. No, no, exactly. I mean, should, I mean, seriously. You should, um, you should get like a little, you should get like a little heated blanket well, and just, well, and then like put your slippers on, some sweatpants and, uh, have like a blanket and a little pillow and just. Bring a snuggie. Just sitting there all cuddled up. Yeah. That's be pretty, pretty While legit. she's in labor. Yeah, she'll. You're doing great, that's, babe. That's that's definitely gonna work out for you. I don't see any any problems with that approach whatsoever. No, there's no way that's gonna backfire. No way. There's not a chance. Not a chance. Maybe. She will. Yeah, she will definitely not divorce you after that. Ah. No, it won't be immediately after. Nobody's gonna divorce somebody and be stuck with twins. It, that's what I'm saying. It won't She's be immediately after. She, she'll like wait a year and then she'll like leave your ass. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Anyways, today's episode. The four secrets to stress management. Ah! Oh, sorry. So I'm stressed. Everyone deals with stress, right? Uh, veterans, civilians alike, doesn't matter. You know what what walk of life you have chosen. Um, you still you deal with stress um, and the challenges in life, and that's just it's a constant. It's not something you're ever going to get away from. Um, and Managing stress is one of the biggest things you can do health in a healthy way. It's one of the biggest things you can do for overall mind, body, spirit, health. Would you not agree, yeah. John? I mean, stress is one of those things that it's going to be, It's like you said, it's ever present in your life. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. There's ways that you can cope with it, but you can't just cut it out because you're going to be stressed at work. You're going to be stressed with your kids. You're going to be stressed at your wife. You're going to be stressed in traffic. Um, shit. Uh, so last week was the first first week of school for my kids. And I swear to God, I got like 30 phone calls from my ex-wife because she was stressed out because of getting the kids to school and shit because she decided to move uh, out of district for my son. And yeah. she waited to the last minute, so she wasn't able to get my daughter on the bus systems right away, so she had to do both. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Like, it's, the thing is, she, she wasn't even working the first the first two days. And I'm like, what are you so stressed about? Because you're sitting in traffic? Yeah. Like, come on. You didn't expect Manage that? your stress. Well, and it's, I mean... Like, like we said, you're going to have stress, so you're either going to deal with it in a good way or a bad way, right? And if you deal with it in a bad way, then it's just going to wreak havoc on your equilibrium, your physical health, your mental health, your life. I mean, it's just going to bring everything down. It, it, it narrows your ability to think clearly and function effectively and just enjoy life. Yeah. You know? And uh, I think certainly, you know, I have struggled with it. I know you have a lot of veterans that get out. Um, and just with all the other issues they have going on in their life i think generally speaking most veterans have a higher level of stressors in their life than your average person and right? everybody's and everybody has stress right so if you're somebody who lets your stress affect you in a negative way and you start bringing that out into the into the world people don't want to deal with that shit like i know if i'm stressed out last thing i want to do is deal with somebody else that's even more stressed out because it just sits there and festers, right? It's like taking two fires and putting them together. You just go one big fucking fire. Now, I want to go next to somebody who's going to help me fucking calm down, um, get get a course of action, and, and, and you know, move forward. Or, or even just, just distract myself a little bit. Like, I don't want to just sit there and hang out with somebody who's a mess. No, and, and uh, I mean, it goes back, you know, we, we've, we've talked about this on previous episodes, you know, the people you surround yourself. You know, you're... you're you're, those who you're going to think like yep. and the goal obviously is just a balanced life right mm -hmm. um and, and developing the resiliency to meet the pressures and challenges that you're going to find in life regardless of what you do yeah um 
And of course, there's no one size fits all, um, but you have to find what works best for you, which is why we kind of took our approach and narrowed it down. Because, you know, most veterans, if you're like me, like you're pretty stupid and you can't remember a lot. And so the simpler is the better. Right. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. This guy likes to think that he's stupid. Uh, he's actually very intelligent. He just uh, he likes to set he likes to set the bar. I do low. set the bar low. But set low expectations. Yeah, but self-deprecation is so much more fun to joke about than, you know, edifying yeah. yourself. Yeah, because otherwise you're just cocky. Yeah, you come off as an asshole. Yeah, well. You, well, you, I mean, you, I am an you asshole. You come off so as an asshole anyway. That's true, but you come off as an even more, it, like it, a cocky, I'm an asshole, arrogant. but I'm not a co- cocky you're asshole. arrogant. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to be that. You so, don't be arrogant. step one, right? Identify the stressors, right? You want to simplify your life, and you have to identify your triggers, the, the aspects of your life that are stressing you and then why they're stressing you, right? Yeah. And that's and that requires, in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, if you disagree, but in my opinion, in order to do that, like you have to get to a place where you're willing to be honest with yourself. Like you have to have an honest conversation. Okay, what are, what's the shit I'm going through? How much have I contributed to that problem? And, you know, what what am I allowing into my life that's creating that. Like you wanna, you wanna kick out the bad. You know those those negative habits that you identify. Get rid of those. Yeah. Develop good habits. Bring in the good. Right. Yeah. I mean so, that's. So yeah. So so if you got people that are stressful in your life, you know, either get them out altogether in some aspect. In some cases you can't. So you just got to keep them at ar- arm's length. Mm-hmm. So that when shit start, starts to get ridiculous, you just you put up your arm and put your phone on silent. And you're like. Stay the fuck out of my ears for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but you, again, you have to be honest with, but you also got to be honest with, like, what you're, like, you have to develop those healthy boundaries um, in your life. You know, the people that you're surrounding yourself with that are bringing you down, um, like you said, you keep them at arm's length. There's some people you can't get rid of, yeah. right, that you can't just cut off all communication with because, you know, you guys have, uh, you know, um, there's obligations, children, you know, whatever that requires you to maintain contact. Yeah. Um, but identifying those stressors, being honest with yourself about why they're stressing you, and, uh, I mean, divorce is a, a perfect example. There's, there's not – any divorce out there where, in my opinion, most at least, where everybody's hands are clean, right? And I use divorce because we've both been through it. Like, it is probably one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing, you're ever going to go through it's in your life. It's definitely the hardest thing I've ever had to go through. Yeah. And I'm sure we can, if we're both being honest with ourselves, like, what did we do to exasperate the problem? A lot. A lot. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah, oh yeah. Definitely. Like. Probably it's baby the li- steps to get better. Right. Probably like the lion's share in my respect. You know, in my opinion, um, or my situation rather. Like I did a lot to put myself in a situation where I was highly stressed, and that led to you know me being depressed, you know, anxious, um, you know, frustrated, angry, what have you, and uh, I I had very poor emotional regulation at, at points because I was so stressed. Right. And I, I did not handle it. I did not control it. Yeah. Um, and so much of that stress is it's so temporary. Right. Like a lot of times you it's it's like being outside. It's like being outside in the heat, like a really fucking hot day. And it's like miserable. You're 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 out there. You're sweating. You're, then as soon as you go inside in the air condition, it's like, whew. yeah, stress a lot of that, too. Like you you get away from that situation and a lot of times your stress levels will go down. Right. So, yeah, you got to be able to got to be able to figure out that that egress route when you when you need to you know well you need to figure out how to break that cycle of negative mentality um you know i i kind of when i'm thinking about how i would characterize stress it's almost like you know you're underwater and you can't breathe right but you're only army i didn't do that training but you're only but you're only a couple of you know you're only just a little bit under the surface right and if you can just if you can just kick yourself to the surface a little bit and get that breath of air you can get some perspective right and you can you can kind of control that stress. And that's kind of where step two comes into place. That actually reminds me of a meme that I saw. I'm going to pull it up, and I'm going to try to remember to have Kyle overlay it. Uh, it's a picture of a guy, and he's sitting there with his head out of the water, barely barely able to breathe, and then it zooms out, and he's sitting on the bottom of the pool. Yeah. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah. Proceed to step two. 
But step two, take care of yourself, right? So just like the equipment that you would use in the military, um, your weapon, you know, keeping yourself in top working order is key. And that's not just uh, from a physical standpoint, but a mental standpoint too, right? Um, and I, I think when you take ownership of your life and maybe some of the choices that you're, you're, you're making um, and, and understanding kind of uh, when, you, when you've identified those stressors and why you're stressed, you can take ownership and create a path forward in taking care of yourself, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, maintaining a, a, a physical fitness regimen, you know, running, you know, working out. And for, for each person, that's going to look different. But when you, when you work on your physical health, when you eat right, right, that's going to help you uh, um, emotionally regulate better, right? Because you're, you're going to be uh, chemically regulated better, right? Which means you're mentally going to be regulated better. Yeah. And, and so for me, you know, working out, being physical, physically fit, um, and getting into a routine helps distract you from the bad in your life and helps reinforce the good in your life, right? Hey, I'll tell you what, I was in the best shape of my life when I was going through my divorce because I was taking all the anger and frustration out on the iron. Yeah. I was the strongest. I was in the best shape. I was, I was fucking huge. Then as soon as all that stress kind of went away and I started loving myself again, I got comfortable. Yeah. But, but that's about to stop. Like, I'm about to, uh, I'm about to start hitting it. Like, uh, giddy, but giddy, uh. Uh, one thing I've learned through my journey um, and speaking to to the audience, especially the men in the audience. And, and, you know, we've discussed this, but, you know, I was my hormones were all over the place. My, my T levels when Way I got too out much estrogen in his life, my T levels were uh, were so low and, and, you know, doing research and getting hormonally optimized has really been a boon to my physical health. Did right? you start to, did you get on test? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I need uh, to do that. Through my, through my GP. But what I'm saying is, is that, and they're doing a lot of research that's connecting low T levels with, uh, with veterans, especially veterans who deployed a lot, uh, lived in high stress environments, you know, um, hormonally you get out of whack and, uh, y your body does not adjust, um, as it should. And so you get out and, you're you're deregulated in a way that is negatively affecting not only your physical health, maybe your sexual health, but certainly mental health. And that was the case for me. Um, yeah, and it was so, the same way when I so I was I was on test for uh, for a while, and then I got off of it because I went to the VA and they're like, oh, with PTSD, the testosterone, blah blah, blah it's bullshit. I'm about to get back on it um, because as soon as I got off it, I lost motivation at the gym, my sleep started going down, my concentration started going down. Um, Everything, everything just started sucking. So no, I, I definitely agree. Like uh, getting those those hormones checked, and th that reminds me, um, I need to go ahead and schedule that. Yeah. Um, what uh, what levels do they have you on? How I much are you taking? I couldn't tell you. Oh yeah, yeah. Have you not started? It's an yet? IV. Yeah, I haven't started yet. It's. A, I mean, it's not just my T levels. Like it's an entire. Uh, yeah. Oh no shit. Yeah. Like it's 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 uh, IV it's intravenous. I mean, it's like B twelve. It's. Are they uh, gonna make you go in every week? No, no, no. It's. I think you do it three times a year. We'll talk offline about it. That's and weird. Yeah. yeah, usually, usually with, when you're doing tests, you do a. Uh, no, it's it's not. It's um. Uh, it's the same. It's the same company that um, Dan and his brother have used. They're uh, they're out of Wilmington. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll drop it. it. We'll drop it in the comments. <laughs> um, uh, I forget the doctor's name in his practice, but he was actually a. Uh, he started out as like a gynecologist, and they got really uh really interested in like hormones and hormone therapy as it pertained to that and then it kind of developed into a uh a hormone into, gene therapy yeah, yeah yeah anyways really cool but point is uh if you find yourself getting stressed and anxious especially if you're a male um it doesn't hurt to go to your gp and get um get your uh, your hormones tested uh, and see where your levels are and then uh and then get you know get advice from there and that that you know leads into you know you know kind of the next point of taking care of yourself Certainly worked for me. You know, you kind of have said that therapy never really worked for you. But counseling and therapy, like, that's like one of the best things you could do for yourself. Because yeah. it allows you to, if you're open and honest with yourself, right, you're connecting yourself with somebody who, again, you know, is, is professionally trained in, in, in helping people figure out what's wrong with them and why it's wrong with them, um, who's going to give you an unbiased opinion. And uh, for me, that, that worked really well. It continues to work really well. And it's allowed me to, to find a better routine mm -hmm. um, 
in, in my journey to, to fixing, unfucking myself, as it would be. Yeah. So one thing that I, uh, I've just started kind of thinking about, we always think about water is so important, right? Uh, so I just started reading the book uh, called TB12. It's from Tom Brady. And one of the big things that they talk about is, is the fact that a lot of people, most people, as they age, your muscles start getting rigid. Um, and heavy lifting works with that, um, helps exacerbate that. Uh, but having the muscle pliability um, kind of helps you from, from getting injured throughout life because it, it gives your muscles the ability to quickly react to, to situations, uh, especially for him, like getting hit. Like as soon as he started this whole muscle pliability uh, training regimen, he hasn't been injured since. One of the big things in that is drinking enough water because – Which I do not you do. You can't, neither do I. I drink more monsters than I do water. Same here. But the uh, – I'm trying to I'm, – I'm making a conscious effort to try to do that because your, your muscles can't stay pliable when they're in a constant state of dehydration. So, uh, and that, that goes for your, your brain as well. Like, so if you're not, and, and I, I tested this, like I did my normal routine and then this week I cut down, well, I tried to cut down. Uh, I did it a couple of days, uh, how many monsters I had. And I started really upping my water and I'll tell you what, I, I felt better, uh, cognitively. I was sharper, uh, just by drinking water, more water. Yeah. I mean, it's hot as balls outside right now anyway. So, I mean, I should be drinking a shit ton of water. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I was at my son's soccer practice, and I coach, so I'm 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 more active than like you know the regular parents who kind of just sit on the sidelines. But still, I'm just walking around. The kids are doing most of the work, and I'm still sweating. Yeah, and I'm still you know getting dehydrated, and I could feel it uh, even now. It's hotter than balls outside. Hotter yeah. than Satan's balls, to be exact. But that that is, that's actually a good point because um, it leads me into the third step, which is focus on the positive. Focus on what you can control and fuck the negative, right? You can't control the temperature, right? You can't control the fact that, you know, you, you, you have to be out there. Um, I mean, that's just, that's just part of life. Um, and so it, it, it goes back to what we were talking you about can't, earlier. You can't control the asshole that cuts you off in traffic? <clears throat> well, no, you can't. And, and that, so um, I think... Um, uh, what's his name? Extreme ownership. Um, Jocko. Jocko. He, this, this to me, when I think of this, focus on the positive, fuck the negative. Like this is where his, his kind of, uh, approach to life, you know, where you, you take extreme ownership of everything that happens to you. Yeah. Right. Any situation you break it down and you're like, okay, what could I have done differently to prevent that outcome? Did you see his video post about he didn't about what he would have said if he was president of this whole disaster in Afghanistan. No, mm -mm. dude, this shit was powerful, man. Yeah, no, he's he, good people, man. I was, have it. He was like <clears throat> basically going in there. I fucked up. My corrective actions are going to be, I'm going to take care of people. I'm going to go in there and get people and I'm going to destroy anybody that gets in my way. But just his, I, I really encourage you guys to go, uh, go listen to it. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, it's not very long, but it's a, it was an incredible speech and, that's the kind of leadership that we need in our White House. Uh, it's, I, I'm not going to get on this this soapbox right now. Uh. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. But that's also the kind of leadership you need in your life. Like yeah. that's the that's the mentality, the attitude to take over your life, the po and, and institute positive change. Right. Focus on the positive, what you control. Fuck the negative, but understand too, like the the impact you're having we have a lot more control but when you say focus on the positive and what you control people need to realize you have a lot more control than you otherwise might think yeah, right? you have control of your your actions and the way you handle things regardless, regardless of what's regardless happening of what's going on yeah if you're if you're walking down the street at night and you get robbed right but that's not your fault that you got robbed but at the same time you have to say okay well like what led like what led to that outcome? Maybe I shouldn't have been walking down that street at night, right? Maybe I could have taken a different different approach. That's that's extreme ownership in a nutshell, and it's it's. I don't want to characterize it as like a can do attitude, right? Because but, that seems too that seems too like on the nose. But it's it's about like basically focusing your energies in a positive direction in life, right? Focus on the positive things, what you can control. You know, speaking back to identifying your stressors, you remove those negatives, and then you work on the healthy relationships in your life, right? 
the healthy things in your life, your family, your kids, like your coworkers. And how you respond to things. Like, so, take the example of if you're if you get robbed in the middle of the night, uh, don't go home and yell at your wife because she asked you to go to the, to go to the store. Yeah. This is your fault if you didn't ask me to go do this. And no, no, that's not her fucking fault. Yeah. Um, it's it's his fault for fucking um, robbing you, and it's your fault for not being nothing but man to be able to fuck his shit up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, that goes back. Okay, here, let's 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 go back to what you were talking about with Biden. And this this is not meant to be a swipe at Biden. This is not meant to be a political, but I just maybe a thought exercise, right? So let's let's say Biden, he's he's uh, he's president, right? So my interpretation of his um, latest uh, failure public speaking, you know, where he was, he took ownership. He was like, yes, uh, you know, I take ownership of what happened, but let's, let's not forget who started this whole thing. You know, he started to divert attention away from Trump, but think about wh how powerful it would have been to be like, yeah, um, yeah, I fucked up. It's my fault. Right. Um, here's what I'm going to do about it. You know, piggybacking off what Jocko said, like you're, you're taking ownership in the moment of what happened and, and, and your choices that led to that outcome, you might not have started the country. He, he might not have started that process. You may, maybe Trump started that process, but he finished it. Right. And the outcome, the burden falls on his shoulders and he did not take well, ownership. He executed but, the entire thing though. Trump didn't execute any of that. He executed 100% of it. Um, but I understand that. What I'm saying is, like, think of how powerful it would have been and the message it would have sent to the American people if he would have just been like, yep, you know what? I was in power. I fucked up. This is what I'm going to do about it. Not blame it on anyone else. Not bring anyone else into it. That's, that's, how, you gain, that's how you garnish respect. That's leadership. Back to uh, last week's episode. Right, where we were talking about leadership. Yeah, that right there is leadership. That's um, extreme ownership of your choices and the outcomes, regardless of other people and what they did and their inputs. Yeah. Right, um, being honest with yourself about the the role you played in that outcome. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I I think that's just that's just very important to removing a lot, you know, getting to a point where you can um, rash, you know, you can introspectively look at yourself. OK, you know, here's a negative in my life. Here's the positive and separating the two and moving forward, focusing those positive energies. Yeah. And it starts with your mentality. It starts with your attitude where uh, regardless of what happened, um, you know, you take ownership. I mean, Imagine if you're a CEO of – see, that's the thing with, with Biden, right, and, and the presidency. Any company out there, any – any like, say, what if something similar happened to, to Facebook, right, and Mark Zuckerberg got on and – he was like, yeah, you know, I'm in charge. Buck ends with me, but it's also but ABC's I this, problem. I got this idea from MySpace, so it's Tom's fault. Yeah. Like, no. Fuck. That, Tom did you, nothing to hurt you. You you think his investors would accept that? No. Fuck no. Are you kidding me? But since we're going to – it's just this this segment right here is we're focusing on the positive. My <laughs> positive outlook on the job that Biden is doing in office is we can only go up from here. <laughs> like, there's so much room to improve. Uh, well, I, I don't know if, I mean, we could, it could get a lot worse. Get and worse. I, I think it, but we have so much room to improve, <laughs> like being positive. Well, but you, in order for it to improve, you got to make the right decisions, but that's either near or there. So yeah, step four, find ways to relax, find ways to de-stress, whether that's, what did you do in combat to de-stress? <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Those shoes, man. Got it was nice and quiet and lonely. That AC hit you in all the right places. I'm beating your dick like it owes you money. Yeah. What was uh What was uh, the term we used last week? Uh oh. The talking about um the prior prism. The prior prism. Yeah. It was. But that's indica yeah, That indicates a spinal injury. A oh. Hard dick caused by a spinal injury. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. Some nights I probably gave myself a spinal injury. All right, let's be real here, man. It gets lonely out there in Iraq. All right, it's because he was hitting the back too. He was all like, oh. but you gotta find ways to relax. Whatever that looks like to you. Read a book, music, exercise. Exercise is a beat great your dick. one. I don't know. Just don't beat your kids. Just don't beat your kids or your wife or anybody for that matter. 
Um, it's like turning into a Friday night uh, safety brief. <laughs> don't add or subtract to the population. Don't beat your wife. Don't beat your kids. If you're married, stay married. If you're single, stay single. Don't be sleeping with the married chicks. Oh, God. <sighs> yeah, but there's always that one guy. It's always always that up. one guy that fucks up. Getting called at fucking 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Recall formation. God damn it. Who, what happened now? Yeah. Some asshole got picked up at the strip club for trying to finger bang a stripper in the butthole. That was why we couldn't go. I think it was a hundred mile radius. Like if, unless you were taking leave, you couldn't. Well, it depends where we were in our rotation. Um, That's pretty much across the board in the military. Yeah. So you got your, you got your, you don't go beyond this. That people do it all the time. Um, yeah. Just as long as you don't get caught. Right. But that's, mm-hmm. you know, they were, uh, they were finding ways to de-stress and relax. And sometimes you got to go a little <laughs> further than a hundred miles. Right. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> yeah. If you have to go oh, more than a hundred miles, you must be talking about going to a concert. I thought you were talking about something else. Oh yeah. Of course I was talking about going concert. to a concert. Oh, what's your fucking mind is in the gutter. Your mind's, you took it there, dude. You led me there. <laughs> I did lead you there. <laughs> blind leading the blind though. I swear to God, it was uh, it was 400 miles. I was going to a book signing for my favorite motivational speaker. It was his, it was Brandon Bouchard. He's fantastic. Live, laugh, love. You know? Yeah, I was going to get my signed copy of Five Love Languages. And uh, I was actually going to get a, a thank you for my service. Thank me for my service? Whatever, Matt Best. Yes. Thank you, or thank me for my service. I don't know, whatever. Whatever it is. I didn't read it. He won't return my Instagram. He won't come on the show. I'm not going to read his book. Yeah. It's hilarious, though. It's a good book. It's actually really funny. And it's, um, he's a funny dude. And, you know, most people see him, know him through his YouTube videos and his humor. But, um, yeah, there's actually some pretty good anecdotal stuff in that book. And some of the shit he went through in deployment and afterwards um, to get to where he is, man. And actually all those guys, um, Jared, you know, Rocco. um, Going through a lot of alcohol. They've all got, uh, yeah, man, they've, and that, that they're just, you know, obviously they're, they're more famous, but that their stories can be replicated across, you know, the veteran community. Yeah. Um, so there's just a lot of dudes that have, who've been through some shit, right? So I've never flown anybody in to have them have sex on my podcast. Well, it worked for him, didn't it? It really, yeah, it did. That put them on the map. I think they were on the map before that, but yeah. It's, that really put them on the yeah. map. Like, um, did you listen to that shit? No, I didn't. But that I've would heard. be distracting. Like, there's no way that I could. Uh... Uh, but they weren't in the same room. Yeah, they were in the same room. No, they weren't. That, yes, not, they were. Not where they. No, they would go up there and interview them like between sessions. No, they were in the same room. They were off. Off. They were offset, but they were in the same room as them. They had a microphone above the bed. Well, I knew that. I didn't realize they were having the podcast in the same yes. room as the couple was copulating. Dude, at one point, I think Rocco got on the bed with them and was talking to them. Nice. I think it was Rocco. I don't know. I, I, I talk, I talk, we talked. Maybe about that's it. where he got his name Rocco from. <laughs> Rocco? We didn't ask you that when we had you on. I'm going to have to ask you that. I'm sure. I'll, I'll shoot him a text. I was actually talking to him a couple weeks ago uh, on the phone. I was getting uh, was getting some advice on how to deal with crazy-ass ex-wife because he's got a couple of them, I think. Yeah. Well, that, well that's you were, you were trying to regulate and manage the stress in your life. I was, right. look, I was looking up to somebody who's been there, done that, and I was getting uh, getting advice. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And that's that's actually a good point too. Um, is you know you know know who you can trust, and you know s- surround yourself with people who you know is going to give you good, healthy advice, constructive advice, and uh, don't be afraid to reach out to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as men, you know, we certainly struggle with that. Guys do generally. Just we don't like for one. You know, we're all, most of us are disconnected from our emotions to a much larger degree than I'd say your average woman. Um, and so it's, it's harder for us to talk about shit and, uh, and be honest with ourselves about what we're going through. And um, I think really, you know, really, you know, cutting down on your stress and, and having a fulfilled life, you're going to need to be able to be honest with, with yourself about the shit you're going through and, uh, and figure out ways to, to fix it. Yeah. So I think that's about it. That is four steps. The four secrets to stress management, even though it's not really a secret because everybody's like, yeah, you guys are just spouting a bunch of shit that's uh, pretty common sense. However, you didn't think about it. You didn't fucking have the podcast about us. So shut the fuck up and thank us. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. And uh, if you guys got questions, comments, concerns, if you think we're doing a great job or we're just a bunch of idiots, um, by all means, leave leave a message in the comments. Subscribe. Um, subscribe. Share the shit. Wherever that little hot button is. I don't know. What do you do? You're just like, yeah. Not those hot buttons. Oh, I'm sorry. Those hot buttons, hot buttons. Those hot buttons stay pressed. Yeah, they do. That's, I'm trying to do whatever I can to get us get us on the map. Like I'm wearing a white shirt. Fucking, <laughs> I pump the AC down. I've got hard nipples. Trying to fucking. It works on TikTok for the dumb hoes. Like why can't it work for me? What the fuck? Pete, I've, Pete. I've worn short shorts. I've done everything. I've fucking shown my ass. Like come on guys, give me a break. Pete Davidson will give a, another dude a blowjob for 3K. That shit was funny. So I showed him that uh, SNL clip. SNL clip earlier, but John, he goes a lot lower. He's he's quite not that that well, expensive. I'm also not on TV, so I'm just that's on true. A podcast that I pay for. But w- what I'm saying is he 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 will do just about anything for success. Um, Except I will not. I will not uh, lower my my values. Luckily, shut up. Luckily, what values? Luckily, you gotta have values to lower them. I've got values. Thank you very much. Luckily for whoever is listening to the sponsorship, I'll do some pretty sketchy shit for some spot. Like that's not a sponsorship. That's not a. That's not a value that I've got. Like I'll show my butthole in OnlyFans. Like I don't care. It's only gay if you define gayness a certain way. Eh. Right. Yeah. It's that's a spectrum. It's more of a spectrum. It's not like a hard. Yeah, you're gay. No, you're not gay. That's only gay if you enjoy it, make eye contact, or push back. Oh, okay, that's true. And if you and if you return the favor, then you're just being courteous, right? Yeah. Exactly. You're just being a good human. That's not actually gay. No, it's just that you know. I mean, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys and gals, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Four secrets to stress management. Um, you can find us at the real Kyle Mason on on IG. Is that what people? Is that what the kids are calling his name? IG. Yeah. I'm so new to the whole social media thing. I think he's posted like three things. Yeah. Like so I'm the real Kyle Mason. You're John John, Doc John Rowley. Cock Rolly. No, a cock. Fuck you. It's Doc. You dick. Thirty Doc of thirty two episodes and you still can't get it right. Are we at thirty two? Yeah. That's Can actually the first it? time. That's actually the first time I've said it on I don't think one of these episodes. Yeah, I don't think we've ever. Anyways, yeah, whatever. hit like, subscribe, you know, all that cool stuff that apparently is really good for a podcast. Um, and we will see you next time. Hasta! <laughs>